Alright, you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24, and we're going to begin our reading in verse 4. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes, and divers places. But all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. But because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I'd like to preach this morning, the Lord being my helper, on the thought, protect your love. Dear Lord, we thank You and we praise You for another opportunity to be with Your people this morning. We pray that You'd make us to understand Your Word more perfectly in the last days, Lord, that we would uh, see what's transpiring about us and that we'd be a uh, faithful witness, Lord, and we'd protect what You've given us. Lord God, we pray this morning that You would be with us, our people, Lord, and that You might manifest Yourself to, to them, Lord, that You would see, uh, allow them to see the truths that You have imparted in Your Word, Lord, and that You make us conscious and understand our duties to You, Lord. And we'd be faithful to give You the praise for it, for it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, uh, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture, sometimes I think that we... Uh, kind of missed the boat on it, but um, the Lord Jesus is addressing the known church at that time. Uh, uh, Paul writes, I place some in the church, first apostles. And if you study the text line of this, he's pulled the apostles away and he's talking directly to them. So the known church at that time, he is addressing them. And so it begins, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now, a lot of people say a true church can't be deceived. Well, yes, it can be deceived. Uh, I think that they'll go awry, and I don't know really exactly when the Lord withdraws Himself from a, from a disobedient church, but just because you're in a church does not mean you can't be deceived. You're not exempt from it. Uh, people are deceived on a routine basis. And, and we as Lord's people need to understand and know that. And I, I would dare say that the biggest thing that we're deceived with is our own self-righteousness. I'm sovereign grace Baptist. Well, so what? Yeah. You know who made you that? You know, what does the Bible say concerning you know, this thing of joining the church is kind of not really in the Bible much anyway. Because the Bible says, I have placed some in the church. That's an act of God. It's not an act of man. And, and, and so we see then, what we should be is humbled and blessed that, that He did that for us. And, and so He says, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, I'm going to give you two things on that. The first one is this. Um, there are going to be people rise up saying that I am Christ. And the Antichrist will be, will be recognized. You know, a lot of people have said that before and they just wasn't recognized. But the Antichrist, the Jewish people, and I think the Catholic people too, are going to say, yeah, that is him. And they're going to be deceived by that. But I want you to see that another flip side of that is this. There are a lot of false teachings out there. And they say they're Christian. They say they're Christ-like. But they really don't have, uh, they don't have anything to really back it up. And we'll see that in a minute by the, uh, by the Word of God. So many will come, and we live in a supposed 
in a Christian nation, and that's a lot of people. Verse 6, And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Now, I'll give you two things on that as well. I really believe, and this is my own thinking, and you know, it, it is very limited, but I believe that really a time clock in one sense got started with World War I. Because the entire world was at war with each other. And it's often referred to in history as the Great War. And, and uh, then World War II came behind it. And you know what? We really have not known peace since then. We have been involved somewhere ever since that day. And, and so I want you to see that those are benchmarks that we as the Lord's people, if nothing else, and, and I'm not a predictor of the coming of Christ, because the Bible's too clear, no man knoweth the day nor the hour. And so I'm not a predictor of the coming of Christ, but I, I, you know, uh, the Bible says this, when you see these things begin to come pass, come to pass, know that summer draweth nigh. So we, we, need to be, uh, we need to be ready. We need to be understanding of exactly what the Bible is teaching. And so we find here in verse 6, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. Now, and I'll have to throw myself in the pot with this. When our nation was attacked on September 11th, was it unsettling to you? You'd be lying if you told me, no, I thought it was great. It's troubling. You know what? That's the only time in history except the Civil War our nation's ever been attacked on its own soil. Yeah. And, and you know what? And people, people were, you know what? It did this for about a two-week period. It brought this nation to its knees again. And, and that was a good thing. That, that was a good thing. And so, I want you to see, despite what the Lord Jesus advised His church on this occasion, He said, be that, be, don't be troubled. You're going to see this. Don't be upset. Don't be, don't get the, uh, don't wring your hands. It's okay. For all of these things must, must come to pass. You know what? Uh, I get so tired of people saying, I just want to go home to be with the Lord Jesus, but they don't want to go through what it's going to take to get there. You know what? If we really want to go home to be with the Lord Jesus, we're going to see war. And I think it'll get, I think it'll get better. Before, I mean, worse before it gets better. I, you know what? Uh, the attack on our nation on 9-11... I fully believe it will happen again. And probably on a grander scale. I'll tell you, that guy in North Korea is a nut. And, and so we as the Lord's people need to understand and know that we're not exempt. And if we really want the coming of the Lord, we must, we must go through this. For all these things must come to pass, but the end... The end is not yet. Now the end that's in question, I personally believe, is the Gentile age. Uh, some people call it the church age. Uh, I like to say the Gentile age because you know what? It's an honor and a privilege and, a, and an act of Almighty God to be in the church. But I personally believe when He calls us out, all the believers will go. So... I'll say the end of the Gentile age, and then he will he will manifest himself and turn himself back to his nation Israel at the end of that time. So it's not the end of the church age; it's the end of the Gentile age. At this point, he'll be done dealing with us, and we'll get to go home to be with the Lord Jesus. And I'll show you that just in a minute by the help of the Lord. For the for nation uh, for nation shall ri uh, rise against nation. And kingdom against king kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers or various places. Now, I want you to see that verse 7, what has helped us is the advancement, and I won't give TV much credit, but the advancement of TV and the internet, you know what, uh, the ground don't rumble that you don't know it about all over the whole world within just a few minutes. See, it, it, it is, this has gone on from, from the beginning of time. But now we can see it in a snap. We know if there is an earthquake going on right now in Thailand, you can know about it as soon as the ground quits running.
stumbling because of our technology. So I want you to see that really one of the manifest things of the end time prophecy we're living. Because we can see it and know it in the instant that it happens. Verse 8. For these are the beginnings of sorrows. And, they, and you know, a lot of people will say that verse 7 and 8 are connected. They're not. 8 and 9 are connected. Because he's fixing to tell you that's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's always happened. It'll keep happening. But I'm fixing to tell you where the problems lie. I'm fixing to tell you where the trouble's at. So it's not before 8. It's 8 and below that, that we need to be aware of and understand so that we can protect ourselves. And, and I'll, I'll show you that with the help of the Lord we can. But what you're protecting is not your body. Uh, and these are the beginning of sorrows. So the following things. Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted. Now, that is coming. It is a predictor. Listen, already people who stand for biblical truth are afflicted. And you can just understand that and know that. But see, what we'll get to in a minute, we don't understand the result of that in our spiritual lives. And already, already we're afflicted. Listen, you know what? If we, if we broadcast what we say about sodomite marriage, people will hate us. If we broadcast that it's unfit and not right for a woman to put on a man's garment, we'll be hated. But what's the result? If we say, listen, uh, you don't need your hair bobbed off, ladies. You, you don't need to look like me. You need, but the, the Bible says that the long hair is a glory to her. If we say that, we're going to be hated. Gonna be judged and labeled Pentecostal and all that goes along with it. But you know what? We are simply to stand. Now, with that said, I'll show you what most people miss in a moment. It's going to impact you spiritually. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. None of us has suffered that yet, but it's coming. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And you know what? Today, what we're viewed as people who are very narrow-minded and very old-fashioned, and we say sodomy is a sin, they hate us. They despise that. You know what? Truth has always been questioned by the world and it's always been hated by the world. If you don't believe that, you go back to the original sin in the Garden of Eden, and all Satan did was question the truth. That's all he said. You shall not surely die. And began to question the truth of the Word of God. You, you know why we can't ex just simply accept the truth? It's because we lack faith. Because to, to accept the truth, just thus saith the Lord, it takes faith. And, and, and I, I think in the modern day, we have very little of it to, to do that with. Verse 10. And then, after this, uh, after they're being delivered up and killed, and then shall many be offended. Now, I'll show you how that goes. I, I, I uh, just say this message that I'm preaching this morning, somebody clicks on it on the internet and realizes that I've preached openly against sodomy. Be a day when they say, you go get Larry Lafferty. Right? We all, amen. You, you can be arrested. Now that's one thing. And again, I'm fixing to make, give you the big warning. This is the thing when you say, I don't even know Larry Lafferty. No. You say, I would never do that. Well, that's what the apostles said too. And Peter said, I don't even know him. I don't even know what you're talking about. Right? Mm -hmm. So, in this final day, and as things is drawing to a near, uh, I want you to see, you know, what, it is, what is it to be offended? If I said, Donna, that's an ugly shirt you've got on this morning. 
but be offensive, wouldn't it? Be offended at what I said. I'm going to arrest it because I said sodomy was wrong. Being offended by it. Being said, man, you're so narrow-minded, that makes me sick. Being offended because of the truth. And that's the day where we've arrived at. And, and, and I want you to see again, now he's addressing the church. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Alright, I'm arrested. God in the youngins. One of y'all saying, I know where they live. Let me show you where 221's at. See, that, that will happen. That, that, that is on its way. And I pray to the Lord Jesus it won't be here, but I'm going to show you how it could be here. We're a small group, and, and I understand that, but I want you to see how it can happen very, very quickly. And because iniquity... Well, verse 11, And many false prophets or preachers shall rise and, death, and shall deceive many. That's those that go by and say, Listen, you don't have to be so narrow-minded. God loves everybody. Mm. But see, the problem is the Bible doesn't teach that. You know, the doctrine of election is a glorious truth. But to understand and believe the doctrine of election, you have to understand and believe the, do the doctrine of reprobation too. Yeah. And that means He created Esau, just as an example of the twins, for the express purpose to judge Him. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's very offensive to people. And you know what? It's not so much they feel sorry for Esau, <laughs> they feel sorry for themselves. Because they won't be able to do it on their own, do they not? So in the last day, an easy believism and Christianity is just what we all are is going to be the prevalent theme in the modern day. Now with that said, and because iniquity shall abound. Now, this word iniquity means this. Sin, especially in a profuse sexual way. Is that not the day that we live? Let me ask you this if you don't believe that. How, what does a nearly naked woman have to do with selling a truck? <laughs> but you see it, do you not? Yeah. And you know what? The sad truth is I bet they sell a lot of them that way. Mm -hmm. You know what I want to know about a truck? Does it run well? What can it pull? How strong is it? What size of engine? What kind of gas mileage does it get? We live in a day where iniquity abounds. It's everywhere. You know, what does immorality have to do with TV ratings? You want to shoot it off the, off the top of the chart? Get you three or four men more on godly relationships in a movie and it'll sell like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. We live in the immorality day. That's why three years, two years ago, our Supreme Court said, yeah, it's good for a man and a man and a woman and a woman to marry. We'll go with that. Iniquity abounds. Now, what does abounding mean? It means it's growing and getting stronger and going like wildfire. Iniquity abounds. 1962, prayer removed from the public school system. Think of the changes since 1962. Right? Iniquity abounds. Now in the public school system, Creation is not an option. It does not teach you that. Uh, but do you know there's more scientific evidence for creation than there is for Darwinism? But yet and still, what is taught in the public school system? Evolution, is it not? You know why? Because iniquity abounds. It is taken over. It, it totally uh, consumes us. And, and it's around us every day. And the filth of this world just lays on us. And, and I want you to see the result. 
And because iniquity shall abound, and it does, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, who does that have to be speaking of? Us. How, do you, how much do you love people? I mean, really. We've been doing uh, our, uh, our little project for, for uh, uh, the missions conference is related to sodomite marriage. And I discovered this about myself. And, and, and this, is, this is shame on me, but I, I want you to look at yourself in the same way. I hate those people. And I'm having to deal with that. You know why? Because all I can do is share the gospel with them. Yeah. That's right. And you know why I'm in that shape? Because iniquity abounds. It's everywhere. You know why you're so cold and indifferent to the Holy Ghost? Because iniquity abounds. Mm -hmm. Do you know why you think, well, if they're not sovereign grace, I'm not sure they're saved? Because iniquity abounds. You know why you turn your nose up at people and say, my church is more sound than theirs? Because iniquity abounds. Right? Yeah. And the result is, we're very cold and indifferent people to the Holy Spirit. We're not moved, we're not motivated, we're not brokenhearted over sin. And the reason why we've waxed cold. But does it have to be that way? And I'll give you an errant no. It does not have to be that way. And, and I'll show you how we can combat it just a little bit with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and this book. We'll understand that it does not have to be that way. Now go with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 13. I was going to read one verse there. Luke 13 and verse 27. Luke, verse, Luke 13 verse 27. The Bible says this, but he, but he shall say, I tell you, I know from which ye are, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Now, here is he's separating people out and just to show that he knows that there can be workers of iniquity among the Lord's people. And I see that more and more as I grow older. This just this is just the truth. You don't know people. You think you do. You think you've got them figured out. But the truth is, me and Donna have been together over 30 years counting the time we dated. And I know her pretty good, but I don't know everything about her. She knows me pretty good, but she don't know everything about me either. So these iniquitous people that seem oh so gracious and oh so religious, that can be where the iniquity is coming from and what's hindering the church. Right? And so then we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know that. And the only person you really can deal with, and that's what we need to, le to learn and understand, is yourself. Go to Romans chapter 6. Uh, Paul writing to the church there at Rome, uh, I believe the church at Rome to be the defector that went against the things of God altogether and brought in paganality and it's still there with that group today. Romans chapter 6 and uh, verse 19. Romans 6 and verse 19, the Bible says this, I speak after the matter of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Now, in other words, Paul is saying, I'd like to get up to a spiritual level with you, but your flesh is bringing you down. It's an infirmity. I'd like to tell you of the glories that I seen when I was taken from this place, but because you can't even understand and know that you ought to love one another, I can't tell you about the third heaven. Because of what? Your infirmity. 
Your love. You know, you know what the other meaning that that calls is a that that infirmity count carries is adultery. You know, many times we're in a very adulterous relationship with this world. You say, how can I be an adulterer like this? You're supposed to be married to Christ. And so, if I run around with Donna, I'm an adulterer. Right? If you run around on Christ, you're an adulterer. And, and so he says, the church at Rome had a lot of issues. So what were they committing adultery with? Where was this iniquity's origin? Where, what was going on that uh, he had to speak to them this way? Ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. <laughs> Even so now yield your members to righteousness, unto holiness. So every time that we yield ourselves to this ungodly world and all the filth that it has to, uh, you know what it's doing? It's making you cold. Now this is a problem today. A lot of people, a lot of people teach out there that you lose your salvation. No, you don't lose your salvation, but you'll live in coldness. Right. And you know what? We've done it so long, I don't know that we know the difference. I really don't. But I'll give you a little barometer. Do you love people? I mean, do you really love people? Because the very first fruit of the Spirit is love. Yeah. You know, uh, we've had the killing frost now. And up to two weeks week ago, we had roses <coughs> blooming in our front yard. They're gone now. And you know why? It got too cold for them. It's getting too cold for us, y'all. We need to plug in. We need to give up some sin because we just read it was in the Roman church. And his remedy was to get rid of it. Now every one of us men, we have to go out, unfortunately, into the world every day and be exposed and re-exposed and re-exposed. But listen, don't bring it home. But we do. But we do. Right? Amen or oh me? And so we see then that we have to understand what iniquity does. Go me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, just one verse there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 6. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in truth. Now, two ways that every one of us has rejoiced in iniquity. Number one is your hellish TV. You see two people... You know what? What used to be really pornography is accepted as woman today. Man and woman pitched in and rolling around in bed. You know what that is? That's iniquity. We don't need to be around it. Right. Or somebody gets caught in a sin and we chuckle about it. <laughs> I'm glad he got caught. <laughs> he deserved it. Right? We don't need to be among it. We don't. There, there's not one thing about that lifestyle that we need that should be impacting our life and to have the sewage of this world running through our houses, running through our homes, it ought not to be so, but yet and still it is. We, say, we rejoice and say, man, that was good, that was funny. Oh, that was something I really... Uh, and then we'll get all pious and they shouldn't have done that. Listen, iniquity is abounding and it's taking us down to <laughs> Nuts to nothing. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. 
verse 7. The Bible says this, For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, I want you to notice, because it seems like a double-stated sentence, but I want you to see it begins with this, For the mystery of iniquity already works. Now, I want you to know this, that, that fornicating spirit, that, that, that adulterous relationship, us with the world, he says, listen, it already exists. And that was in the days of Paul, a hundred years or less after the days of Christ. He says, they're not involved in this relationship. Listen, we're 2,000 years down the road since then. What do you think the modern church is about? Just a filthy adulterous relationship with the world. He says, it's a mystery to me. I don't see how y'all could be involved in it, but you are. It's a mystery. I don't understand it. I don't get the end sum of it. But the end sum is this. In the rest of this verse, he reveals it. Notice what he says. Only he who now letteth, meaning the Holy Spirit, will let and he'll, he'll he be taken out of the way. Now, listen. The Holy Spirit, that's how you get cold. It's when He withdraws Himself. That's how you wax cold. He said, well, I'll, I'll let it go. If that's your life you've chosen, if that's what you want, have that. That's why Peter said, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. So the only remedy to get hot again is to be near unto the Holy Spirit. It's to be wrapped up in this Word right here. It's to be praying. It's to hear the preaching of the Word of God. Every opportunity you have. You know me and Brother Trescott was talking about this uh, the other day. You know what? Our monthly fellowships are about down to nothing. You can't get people interested. You know when I go to other churches, who's there usually? That church and the local pastors, that's all it's there. And you know what? Iniquity is about it. they got to watch TV. How many people besides me and Donna and her parents remember not slamming? Nobody. Well, no, they're still in Cheetah. <laughs> I saw somebody post on Facebook that's what they enjoyed. And you know what? You know all that was? That was just smut. Ungodly, filthy smut. And you know what? Just gobbling it up, just like it's chocolate. That's why we're getting cold. That's why we're crippled. That's why we, we, we don't serve the Lord. We don't enjoy the Holy Spirit. What we ought to is because we are in this stage that the, uh, I believe the Thessalonican believers was in as well. They, they, didn't, they didn't love the Lord like they needed to. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, the Bible says this, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure or dependable or solid, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So I ask you this morning, do you say, yes, I am a Christian? Now, I don't really care necessarily this morning about you being a Baptist. Don't necessarily be uh, uh, going to talk with you about the five points. But this is what I'm asking you. Do you say you're a Christian? And if you say that, how did you get there? I mean, if you say you're a Christian, what made you come to that conclusion? Right? Had to be something, right? Right. Amen. So, how did you arrive at that? Well, if you say you are, and you truly are, 
Depart from iniquity. Leave it behind. Toss it behind you. Don't be influenced by it anymore because that is what... He, it's going to bring you down. It's going, you're going to wake up one morning and it's going to be like a spiritual iceberg you're living in. And you know, when it gets cold like it's fixing to now, you know what don't happen? Growth. You'll see these fields burn. You'll see them brown and ugly. Look up the trees and they're like skeletons. No growth in a time of coldness. So if that's true, and it is, when Satan attacks, and he will, just like you said, what are you going to do? How prepared are you going to be? Because iniquity abounds. Because it's become accepted. You know, I know preachers, supposed, that are on life number four. You know why that's accepted? Because iniquity abounds. You know why the hymn lines keep coming up? Because iniquity abounds. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen or only? You know why it's accepted now in many of our churches for men to wear short breeches? Because iniquity abounds. That's it. That's, that's where it leaves us. And then... When tragedy strikes, you get the phone call and every present, every parent in the world dreads your son's been involved in the auto accident. Then we want to drop on our knees and head out to God. Yeah. Well, how are you going to do that when you're so cold you haven't heard from God in years? See, prayer... <laughs> you, know, you know who really got that thing? I pray when you're in trouble and only when you're in trouble... That's Catholic doctrine right out of the pits of hell. How did, how did one of our best examples, Daniel, pray? Faced Israel, prayed three times a day, no matter what. You know, really, when you get a call like that and you haven't prayed, I mean really prayed, got hold of God in years, I fully believe you're wasting your time. So then we as the Lord's people, we need to be on guard about coldness. We need to be on guard about iniquity because iniquity leads to coldness. We need to be on guard about sin in our life and not only sin in our life, just our constant exposure to it. Every day, again and again, just bam, 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 bam. Every day. You know what? Eventually you get hard to it. Just started burning wood again this year. And so far my hands are pretty good. But you know by the end of the winter, when you shake my hand, it'll feel callous. And I always end up getting a number of splinters in. I, I think I'm like a splinter magnet. And they're going to be cracked and bleeding. And you know why? Because I'm exposed to it. Again. So, what are you exposing yourself to? What about this? What are you exposing yourself to? Wonderful device can be used for the furtherance of the gospel. Right? Or it can bring you down to nothing. Right? Are you using it? <laughs> You know, I heard a sermon one time years ago, used or being used. <laughs> Has a whole lot of truth in it, doesn't it? And so then we as the Lord's people, we need to be very, very aware of exactly where we're at. So how are we going to stop this? How, how are we going to impact? How are we going to change the course of events that's happening around us all the time? Listen, you know what? I'll say this. You are not going to change the world. You know why? First and foremost, God's cursed it. You ain't going to change that. Men, we have 
to provide for our families. That is a must. That is a command right out of the Word of God. You've got to be out there, but you don't have to be involved. You've got to be out there, but you don't have to partake. And you know what? When you come home, let it go. You know, this I've learned after finally, after almost 25 years of nursing, I leave it when I leave the door. People are like, well, don't you think about that when you get home? I'm like, no. You know why? Because I've given my eight hours, I'm done. You know, they would like you to. They like you to sit and study about that mess all the time. But I, 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 I've learned to let it go. What about you? We need to. Check it at the door. Come home. Love your family. Get that Bible out. Study with your family. Pray with them. Get down on your knees before God. Sing His praises to His glory. And that's all you need to do. That's what we as the Lord's people, you want to be warm, you want to be hot, you want to be close to the Lord. Well, dear friend, that's exactly what it takes if we intend to be Christ-like and we intend to be for the furtherance of the Gospel. Now go with me to 2 Corinthians. Paul had sent them a scathing letter and they had improved somewhat. But he wanted to remind them of some things. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 17. The Bible says this, Wherefore, and that means because of, the reason why, so we'll pick up 15 and 16, what concord agreement have Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel, one that is a non-believer? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Wish the Catholics could get a hold of that one. For ye are, ye are, you, me, everybody that names the name of Christ, ye are the temple of the living God. For God has said, I will dwell in them and walk with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You know what? Uh, and you can say, you know what tattoos are today? They're, they're, they're consuming America. And you know, they're nothing more than this. He's a sign of slavery. That's exactly what they are. And you know what? You know what's manifested in this day? You see whole arms? They look like some kind of, like it has some kind of disease on them. They're just showing what they are. I don't mean that bad, but I, I, I do mean it. You know what? At least in the presence, a peach tree still bears peaches. And somebody that's filled with the world, Man, they, who are, they are who they are. Are they not? Right. Why do we get on this kick when people die and try to preach them right into glory? You know what? It, it's been my express purpose of preaching funerals just to share the gospel and be done with it. If I knew them a little bit, I might say something, uh, something about them, if they're pleasant to be around, something like that. But just share the gospel and be done. Shut the lid and put them in the ground. Because you know what? It's already over with anyway. Amen. Right? And so then we as the Lord's people, we need to understand and know that we are not to be this way. We're not to be overtaken in iniquity. Wherefore, or because of, there's no agreement, there's no concord, there's nothing with those type of people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. You know what? It's already made me sick, and we ain't even into it yet. We're barely past Thanksgiving. All the filth of Christmas among people that name the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I mean, I, I, every year I think I marvel more. You know what? We have no... And everybody, look at my Christmas tree. You know what that is? That's nothing more... <laughs> Than a druid custom, and you're you're bowing down and worshiping the created more than the Creator. Nah, yeah. It should be named among God's people. Right. But man, you know what? And I preached that for years. If you look around, I have my family about me. That's about it. You know why? 
<laughs> They're cold. They can say what they want to. They're spiritually cold. You know what, family? It's winter. But it don't have to be cold. Mm-hmm. Now most of us do that to be okay with it. But God be my helper, I don't, I don't want to be that way. And I'll even go this far because I'll at least I'll be honest, I don't want to be that way anymore, but I see a measure, a measure of it among myself. Last place in the book of the Revelation. John's revelation of end time stuff. And you know what I've seen about Revelation? Everybody wants to skip over the first three chapters and get right into the prophecy of the matter, don't they? And you know why they don't like the church later parts of it? Because it's scathing. It's not a pleasant thing to hear. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. He writes to the church at Laodicea, I know thy works. Larry, I know your works. Matthew, I know your works. Sarah, I know your works. You know what? If that don't bring you to your knees, nothing will. He knows me better than I know myself. Uh, I know your works. I know those secret thoughts. Mm-hmm. I know the filth that you allow into your life. Mm-hmm. I know it. Now, you've heard the term the vicar of Christ. That's what the Pope who promotes himself to be. And he is not. The only vicar or intercessor we ever had was the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. But he thinks and they, they, they want to sell this bill of goods. I come and Eric's Pope and you know what I'm going to I'm going to lie. Well, give me $45 and you're going to be alright. You know what? This is the truth. He can't intercede on my behalf. You know what? The Bible really teaches that's not right. Now you can pray for somebody but you can't intercede on their behalf. You say, well, how do you know? Well, I'll give you this example of Job. He was down there offering sacrifice on the behalf of his children, was he not? He was trying to be intercessor. You know what happened to that ten, them ten kids? Every one of them died. And you know why? Because Job, as good as he was, was not an effective intercessor. And the Pope ain't either. Your pastor's not. Nobody's an effective intercessor but Christ. Amen. And so we see then, as the Lord's people, that we need not get in the shape that this church was in. That they they were totally totally taken down. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, this morning I ask you, where are you at? Are you cold or are you hot? Now, me and Don don't have an ice maker except the trays in our freezer. And the reason we've had every time we cook one up, it's leaked and ruined our kitchen floor. So we don't have And uh, the ice is in there. And you know what? It's cold. It's cold, cold, cold. Andrew was sick this weekend. He has a a weird tooth coming in and he used ice to help him get the swelling down and take a little bit of pain away but Andrew the ice melted did it not see it went glass are you cold or are you hot you know what happens to a hot cup of coffee eventually it gets cold and you know what cold coffee unless it's a frappe is nasty What about you? You know what? You know what's going to pull you down this week? Anything the devil throws your way if you're not on guard. I want to be hot. I, I want to be 
delivering the name of Christ. You know, uh, how did the Holy Ghost came, come upon him in Acts chapter 2? It says, as of a burning fire. Did it not? You know what fire is? It'll burn you. How did, when Elijah had his experience in Isaiah 6, what did the angel cram in his mouth? A live, hot coal. But when he got done, and listen, that had to be a painful process. When he got done, he was left for it because he said, Lord, here am I. Send me, send me. I'm ready for the charge. And you know what? He did it. He preached to Israel. <laughs> took hide hair and all, and they still didn't listen to it. Right. But, he was hot. What about you? 